Hey everybody, in today's video we're going to look at getting an Android emulator set up on our desktop so we can debug and build awesome mobile apps using tools like React Native, Vue Native, and other native mobile app frameworks. So the tool we're going to get going is Android Studio. You can just go to developer.android.com and find the download page and go ahead and click download Android Studio. It's going to ask you to agree to the uh, end user license stuff and just click I have read and agree with the terms above and click download. I've already downloaded it so we're not going to do that right now but I'm going to navigate to my install and I'll walk you through the install really quick as well. So it downloads an executable, go ahead and run that. It's going to open up an install wizard. It's going to ask you to uninstall any old versions that you have, so I'm just going to unclick the box just for now. We're not going to install anything on the video, but I just want to show you for demonstration purposes because I already have it installed. We'll click next, uh, setup walkthrough, click next. So this is what we want to make sure that's checked. So the Android virtual device, that's what's going to give us our emulator. And if for whatever reason this box right here isn't checked, go ahead and check that. It's a pretty large install uh, size required. It's about two and a half gigs. And then with the latest Android 9.0 kernel, it's about a nine gig download. So it does take up a considerable amount of space. So be cautious of that while you're working with these tools. So make sure this box is clicked and we'll click next. And then it's gonna ask you where you wanna install it. Just hit the next button. And then it'll ask you if you wanna create a start menu folder or a desktop icon. And then you can go ahead click install I'm not going to install because I already have it installed so I'm just going to open it all right and as this loads up you can see it's a full-on IDE environment for building mobile apps and it might be a little bit overwhelming at first and uh, don't worry about most of the stuff you won't even have to use any of it what we really want to do is just get an emulator set up so what we want to do is navigate to file settings this will bring up a new menu and then what we're looking for is the Android SDK and if it doesn't automatically populate here it'll be under appearance system settings and then Android SDK so in this view right here we can choose which uh, Android kernels we want to install you can see I have 9.0 installed 8.1 8.0 .1, all the way down to 7.0 and that's just for going back a few versions to make sure I cover all the bases and so I can run it on any devices that might not have the latest Android updates on it so a good tool and you can see you can go all the way back to 2.1 but I wouldn't suggest that because it's uh, pretty deprecated at this point so when you want to install one of these kernels you just click the checkbox and you'll have to click apply right here and it's going to ask you if you want to install it It'll tell you the estimated download size, required disk space, intent folder, required disk space on the partition, and current disk space available. Basically, so you just hit OK, and this one's not very big, it's only 97.5 megabytes, but the Android 9.0 was about 9 gigabytes. So they do vary in size and make sure you have enough space for that. And we're not going to download that, so I'll just uncheck it. But go ahead and do that for whatever versions you want. You can only download and install one at a time, so it will take a while if you want multiple versions. But once those are done and you have what you want downloaded, we can navigate to the SDK Tools tab right here. And we just want to make sure that everything is checked that we were going to be using. So basically, the main things you want is the SDK Build Tools, Android Emulator, SDK Platform Tools, and then uh, we want to scroll down here. We want to take a look at this Intel x86 emulator accelerator. So the Haxum accelerator, basically it's a hardware accelerator for our graphics. And it requires us to run the Android emulation. And it was tricky for me to get this started. And I was confused at first because when I came into here, it said that it was checked and it was installed and everything was good to go. But it was still giving me an error saying that Haxum wasn't installed. So what I ended up doing is going and manually installing that, which I can show you right now. So I would recommend doing this just to double check and make sure that you have it right. So if we go to Google, we can type in Haxum download, just like that. And it'll bring up, we want this first option here, the Intel Hardware Accelerated Execution Manager. 
And if we scroll down on this GitHub page, you can see downloads, the latest hacks and release for Windows and Mac OS hosts are available here. Click that and we can scroll down here and download the zip file if you want. So you can go ahead and click that. It's gonna open, it's not very big. And basically it's just this Intel Haxum Android EXE that we want. So if you unzip this, you can navigate to that unzipped folder and just run the executable. It's gonna install Intel Haxum. And I already have it installed, so it's not gonna do anything, but if you just follow the prompts, it will install without any problem. Click finish. And then with that up and running, we should be able to run our Android emulator. So what we wanna do is when we're in this, back in our Android studio, we're gonna click this little icon up here. It looks like a little smartphone with the Android guy. And that's the AVD manager, our virtual device manager. And that will bring up this window, which we can manage our virtual devices in. So you see I have two devices. I have the Nexus S and the Pixel 2. The Pixel 2 is running at uh, 1080, full 1080 at 420 dots per inch, and also running Android 9.0. You can see it's 11 gigabytes, so it's quite big compared to the Nexus 2. So just be wary of the amount of disk space it takes up. So to get a new virtual device, you can come down here and click Create Virtual Device. And we can select the device that we want. You can see they have a couple different categories. TV, phone, wearable OS, as far as smartwatches and tablet sizes. You can also add new hardware profiles, import hardware profiles, all that stuff. But for right now, we're just going to use the built-in ones. And let's just say we want to add the Pixel XL. So we can just click Pixel XL, click Next. Decide which uh, system image we want on there. We'll just do the Pi as well. And click Next. You can give it a name if you want. Choose the startup orientation. You can also enable and disable the device frame. All right, when that's all set, you can click finish and it will create your new Android device. And when that is ready to go, we can go and click this little play button right here and that will launch it. Just like that, it looks like an iPhone frame, but that's okay. So now we can do some mobile app debugging and we can run this app on our emulator device right here. And I'm working on the Coding Garden Community app in this instance. And this is for the contributors page, uh, what I'm building right now. So we'll just spin this project up really quick and we can either type npm start, yarn start, or expo start since I'm going to be using expo in this project to connect with our Android device. And it does it pretty much automatically. So once you have your Android virtual device installed and up and running and you have an expo project going, it'll link up instantaneously. All right, so what we want to do is say expo start and that will spin up our app and we'll bring up the uh, expo tools, the Metro bundler. All right, so now we bring that up and we can go back to our text editor. And with this, you can see it gives us a QR code we can scan to pull up on our actual device or we can run it on an Android emulator by pressing A. So with our Android emulator up and running, we can press the A button. Oh, it's going to update and install the latest Expo version on this device. So this might take a second. If this is the first time you open up this device on your computer, it's going to ask for a couple uh, permissions. Just click OK and turn it on, allow display over other apps, just click that and turn it on, and then click this back button. Now let's push A again, and it should reopen our app. While it builds the JavaScript bundle, the first time takes a couple seconds, and then it should be pretty quick after that for the hot reloading. And boom, just like that, we have an emulated app go in here and do all our debugging as you would normally running it on a phone. Alright, cool. Well, I hope this video helps you get up and running with uh, an Android emulator using Android Studio SDK and working with Expo. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, give me a comment, subscribe if you want more videos, and thank you so much for checking out RabbitWorks JavaScript.
Thank you and stay awesome.